Here's something a little bit different. I know it's another Royal Enfield 500 bullet crank in between centres in the lathe with the uh, clocks on it, but it's in here for a slightly different reason to uh, what we usually come up against. And the owner brought the engine to me complete with a gearbox on it. He'd already stripped the primary drive side down, but the gearbox was still bolted to the engine and the engine still had the uh, barrel, piston and head on and everything, so I stripped all that and got the crank out because he said he tried fitting a new primary chain and basically he didn't like the fit of it it was far too tight or there was a tight spot on it which was far too tight even with the um, tensioner completely removed which seemed rather odd to me uh, not one that I've really run into before and I know that um, the tension can sort of vary and fluctuate a little as you sort of rotate the engine and the chain and the clutch drum uh, revolve but um, that is actually fairly normal it's very unlikely you'll ever get one that will be perfectly consistent but um, he reckoned that the tight spot on the primary chain was very tight and too tight and he suspected and told me that he thought that the uh, drive side main shaft must be bent and he did say that there was some run out on it um, looking at the alternator when he turned the engine but there is on a lot of them actually to some degree or another Anyway, I put the uh, crank between the centres and I've got the clocks on them. Both reading in thousandths of an inch as usual. And this is what we've got. Now we've got one thousandth of an inch on the timing side. And we got ooh, four thousandths of an inch on the drive side, which is, I've seen worse. And I aim to get better when I put cranks together and true them, but I have seen a lot worse than that. The rise and fall is not quite at the same time, but not far off, so I certainly wouldn't add that one thou to the four thou. But we'll say that it's got four thou run out. I certainly wouldn't subtract it to say it was three. So we'll say we've got four thousandths of an inch run out overall there, which is sort of tolerable um, but not perfect oh hello we've got um, a small cat has joined us here excuse me while I open this door for her she wants to go and look in there for mice there we go. you go in there Millie and see if you can find any mice right then while she's doing that where was it oh yeah the run out on this it's also worth noting I'm sure the camera will pick it up my naked eye does but the uh, inner races of the uh, drive side, the inner roller bearing and the timing side roller bearing are still on the main shafts and uh, it should be possible to see that there's like a sort of foggy appearance to uh, part of the circumference. Now yeah, we've got perfect shine there and uh, we're just going a bit misty and foggy there. And to a lesser degree, the same applies on the timing side. Now that's not um, terrible wear as such, but is probably down to um, the slight run out that we've got there, putting more load and strain on uh, the main bearings at certain points of rotation than others. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to see if I can reduce that run out, see if I can get it down to a couple of thou. But I don't think that has been the problem with his primary chain. But I think I know what has been. And if we look over here, as I say, gearbox was still bolted onto the engine and the engine was complete when it arrived. I unbolted the gearbox. And there's a fibre washer there. And there's also, I've only got the one, the drive side crankcase here to demonstrate, but the timing side was the same. I've seen these fibre washers before, sort of behind the gearbox. Um, but in the case of this one, there's only two of them at the top, one either side. They were there between the engine and the gearbox, so they would have shoved the gearbox back a little bit. So that in itself would uh, move the uh, gearbox main shaft centre further back. And in itself, it might not look much, but it would put more tension and try to stretch the primary chain that little bit more 
So I've got a feeling that in actual fact the engine could probably go back together with those fibre washers removed from where they were, where they shouldn't have been, put back there, or even done away with altogether for that matter, and um, the primary chain will probably fit no problem. But as we come this far and I've got the engine stripped, I'll obviously talk to the owner and just see if he wants anything else looking at while we've got it in bits. And I'm going to try what I'll do, I'll leave the time inside crank pin nut done up tightly, but I'll loosen the drive side one and I'll bump the flywheels and I'll see if I can get a reduction in the run out there that we've got on the drive side and perhaps uh, if I could bring it down to about half of what we got there that would be nice but the crank was actually spinning freely in the crank cases before I unbolted them so no great cause for concern there and I think these uh, these fibre washers being between the engine the, the back of the engine and the front of the gearbox have been the main culprit and the source of his problem so not one I've seen before but there's always a first time and always something else uh, to consider and always worth keeping an open mind about these things. Well here we are back with this uh, 500cc Royal Enfield bullet crank assembly again. I've been working on it and I've managed to get the run out figures down a little and uh, here we are with both clocks reading in thousandths of an inch and both on zero. Let me give the crank a bit of a spin see what we've got. That one's moving up and down, it's fluctuating by one thousandth of an inch. This one is fluctuating by two and a half thousandths of an inch. The good news is the needles are now moving up and down in unison together so I can effectively cancel one out against the other so I can take me one thou one thousandth of an inch there and offset that against the two and a half thousandths of an inch there to give me an actual running in the main bearings run out of one and a half thousandths of an inch so that is a very worthwhile reduction over the four thou or so run out that we had before but like I said earlier I don't think that is going to solve his primary chain tension issues I think that was down to those fiber washers being sandwiched between the back of the engine crankcase and the front of the gearbox and with them out the way and the gearbox able to move that little bit closer towards the engine that will solve the problems that he had with his primary chain tension and you're always going to get some um, fluctuation in this the free play in a primary chain on a machine like this um, when you rotate the engine to different positions um, that's perfectly normal even with a brand new primary chain but the important thing is is that it should fit without being too tight with the tensioner removed at any point of rotation and I think those fiber washers being in the wrong position were the key to that but I know that this crankshaft is fine now so I can discuss it all with the owner and see if he just wants me to get new gaskets and put everything back together or if there's anything else he'd like done while it's apart. So I'm very happy with that. That's certainly a success.